Today we're going to be taking a look at a classic lens, um, really a lens that's very special to me and I'll tell you about the history of it. Um, this is the Minolta 58mm f1.4 MC Rokor PF, uh, a, an early Minolta lens that was common on their SRT 101s. Um, like I say, I have a bit of history with one of these lenses and we'll talk about that. We're going to put it on the workbench and let you see it up close so you can take a look at it and then we'll um, show you some images I've taken with the lens and you can see what you think. This is a, a just a real classic lens. It's got a, kind of its own little cult following that people that really love this lens and yet it doesn't have quite the popularity that some of the other you know 50 millimeter lenses do so they're relatively affordable and um, I think you'll find that this might be one you want to add to your uh, collection of, of uh, vintage lenses. Anyway we're going to put it on the workbench. If you would, please click on the like and subscribe buttons. Let's take a look at this thing. Well, this is the Minolta 58mm f1.4 MC Rokor PF. Now, the MC uh, does not mean multi-coated. It actually means meter coupled. This was one of the first series of lenses that had this meter coupling tab on the aperture ring. So that's meter coupled. And then the PF after, after the Rokor name actually tells you how many lens elements and in how many groups the elements are. So the, the letter P stands for penta or penta, um, which is five. And then the letter F is the sixth letter in the alphabet. So it's five groups, uh, six elements. So six elements and five groups. Um, that's what the PF stands for. Minolta abandoned that. Uh, kind of nomenclature a little later on. Of course, lenses made in Japan. You know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of pros shot Nikon and, and even Canon and and uh, Minolta was kind of always thought of as kind of an amateur camera uh, company. And yet, in 1972, uh, Leica, Leica thought enough of them to um, create a joint agreement with them where they uh, shared some technology and Minolta helped build some cameras and lenses that uh, were compatible with Leica's and and they had a long running relationship for quite a while. Anyway, so this is the lens 58 millimeter which is a little bit on the long side for a 50 millimeter lens. It focuses as close as a little under two feet or 0.6 meters. You know the aperture goes from f16 to 1.4 pretty sizable piece of glass there. If you buy one of these used, you can simply turn the aperture and you should see the aperture moving freely. If it doesn't, you can also stop it down and use the little lever in the back. But if it doesn't do that, then uh, it could need a cleaning. This one is in pretty good shape. The uh, aperture works freely on it and the, the glass is nice and clear on it. So I was talking about my history with this lens. My father gave me a Minolta SR1. Oh gosh, I was about 12 years old, maybe. Um, and that SR1 didn't really normally originally come with this lens, but the one he found, he found it used, of course, was uh, equipped with uh, the same exact lens. And uh, I shot, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of pictures with it. Mostly black and white, though some color. And, uh, you know, I used to process my own film and make my own prints. My dad, being a commercial photographer, I had access to his darkroom. And when I was in high school, I used that SR1 and this lens. Uh, my freshman year, I shot almost in the entire yearbook. I mean, I didn't do the student portraits, um, but almost all the candidates in that entire yearbook are mine. So I, and then the, the following year, I did a significant portion of them. So I have a, a kind of that kind of fun history I can go back and look at all those yearbook pictures and they were all shot with one of these lenses so you know this lens is a lot like a lot of f1.4 lenses of that era it's not super sharp at f1.4 you stop it down to f2 and things get somewhat better and then um, you know down from there it, it improves significantly the coatings on this you notice like I say the MC does not stand for multi coating however as I understand it these are double coated so they're technically they are multi coated and you'll notice the reflections in Minolta lenses versus Nikon lenses if you study some of these vintage lenses you'll see the Nikons have a really blue reflection uh, and the Minoltas tend to have you can see it kind of that yellowish uh, almost brown looking reflections 
if you're out in, in daylight, the reflections are, some of them are quite um, warm colored. The Minolta lenses back in that day were, I think, commonly known to produce a, on color film a slightly warmer image than some of the Nikon lenses. That really may not be completely true, but that was kind of what people used to think of them. So the, the coating is really kind of pretty to look at. It's got all these nice warm tones. And, um, you know, these lit Minolta lenses, like a lot of lenses that air, are just beautifully made. All metal, aluminum, and brass, and glass, and there's no plastic in here. It's, it's all the good stuff. So, um, like I say, I, I had one of these lenses on a Minolta SR1, and um, it was just my constant companion as a camera for a long time. Now, there are two versions of this lens, the what they call the MC1 and the MC2, and that's not an official name by Minolta, it's just something that collectors have come up with. Um, there is some statements on, there are some statements online that you can tell the difference between the two versions by serial number. Um, there's actually a stated serial number you'll see on some websites where it says, you know, after that serial number is the second version. Uh, doing some research, I found that that's not true. That that serial number was actually the serial number of a specific lens that was on a website that was the um, second version, and so everyone just somehow assumed that if you had that serial number higher, then you had the second version. And yet, this one has um, a serial number higher than that one, and yet it is the um, flat ring. So it's... Um, this has, um, when I say flat ring, the, the two versions, the easy way to tell them apart is this one has a fairly flat focusing ring. The un, you know, there's these uh, ribbed or grooved areas and then the smooth areas. And the smooth areas on this one are pretty flat. I mean, they don't really stick out. The second version, these are much more scalloped. Um, the flat areas are taller and then it dishes down into these grooved areas and comes back up to the next flat area. And if you look at one, there's they're pretty noticeable in the two differences or the difference between the two. The difference optically between the two is evidently very slight. Same number of elements, same number of groups. Um, I've heard some different theories on what the differences are inside, but I think from what I can tell optically they're almost identical and the performance of the two is, is also nearly the same. You know, a lot of times when changes were made, they sometimes you know, this, you know, this is evident with some of the Asahi Pentax lenses. Um, the second later versions weren't as good. They found that by changing the design, they could make it a little cheaper to manufacture. I don't know if that's the case here, but don't don't pass up on uh, uh, the early version um, because you think it's inferior. It, it In my mind, I can't see that it is. So, um, really neat lens. It is a little heavy at 9.7 ounces. It's kind of heavy. I used it on a um, micro four-thirds camera. Um, I've been using these mounts by Photosy. Um, I'll put a link in the description for the, the micro four-thirds version. If you search Amazon, you can find others. But there's a little red dot here. And then the red dot on the lens, line it up, and it goes right on. Now this mount does say MD to micro four-thirds or M43. Um, the MC mount lenses and the MD mount lenses have the same physical mount. So even though it's an MC lens, it will fit on an adapter that says MD. And, um, you know, I typically use this, like I say, on a micro four-thirds camera. It, uh, on micro four-thirds, of course, because of the sensor size, this becomes effectively a 116 millimeter lens. If you have a full frame, of course, then it just acts like a regular 58, and APS-C is somewhere in the middle. I'm not sure <laughs> what the exact APS-C uh, size is. But um, this is, you know, it's a just a really beautiful lens. I'm going to show you some pictures that I've taken with this. The first four pictures, um, in 1977, um, I went to an Aerosmith concert, and back then they let you take cameras in. My brother had camped out for tickets, and I had dead center front row tickets, and I was able to stand up on my chair and put my elbows, rest my elbows on the fence that was in front of the stage, and um, shooting, I think it was Kodacolor, um, is ISO 400 uh, color negative film, and um, just shooting available light, and a lot of the pictures shot pretty wide open, Not some of them not entirely wide open, and you know, stage lights can be pretty bright, so... 
I, and I, you know, the SR1 that I had didn't have a meter. I had a handheld meter, but you really couldn't really meter well, you know, with a handheld meter on those kind of lighting conditions. So um, we just basically, I just took a an educated guess as to how to do my exposures, and um, I got some pretty neat pictures. So the first four pictures I'm going to show you actually are from that Aerosmith concert, and they're not scans off the negatives. Uh, I have the negatives, unfortunately, they I loaned them to my brother and. I'm not sure what happened, but there's some real fine scratches on them. I'm going to have, going to, have to figure out a way to um, get those preserved somehow in terms of getting the scratches removed from the images. There are enough of them that it would probably take some pretty sophisticated AI tool or something to figure that out. But the um, those four images were shot at that Aerosmith concert in 1977. And the rest of the images, of course, you know, just shot around town here with a digital camera. But it's a great lens. I, I just love the the charm, the images you get from these older lenses uh, that you just can't reproduce with modern lenses. They just they have a very clean, almost clinical look. The modern lenses do, and these old lenses just give you a, uh, you know, give your images a vibe or a feel that you just can't duplicate with modern glass. And each manufacturer's lenses, you know, are a little different in terms of what they render. So I think you'll find that the Minolta lenses have their own unique look. Um, if you're into bokeh, they tend to give you something of a, a, a soap bubble um, bokeh. Um, I'm not really into bokeh, but it it definitely uh, is some pretty nice looking images. Anyway, I'm going to let you see some images, and then when we're done with that, we'll come back and you can see what you think. There you go. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of those images. I think you can see why uh, I think this lens is really a special lens to have. It's just the image quality from it is really quite beautiful. And, um, you know, mounted on a digital camera, it, it could really be a useful tool. Um, and of course, if you shoot vintage cameras, you know, putting one of these on an old Minolta SRT 101 or uh, something even like the old SR1 that I had would uh, be a lot of fun to use. Anyway, hope you found that uh, interesting. If you have any thoughts or questions, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.